Qualcomm just reported earnings results that topped estimates for its fiscal first quarter. Adjusted earnings of $3.23 a share on revenue of $10.7 billion were each ahead of consensus expectations. But the stock is down in late trading, as you can see on the board there. Daniel Newman, Futurum Research Principal Analyst, is here to break this down for us. And Daniel, at first glance, this report and guidance from Qualcomm looked pretty good and were ahead on most major metrics. Why do you think we're seeing this drop in the stock right now? I think as excited as the market was following Alphabet's results yesterday, we are seeing a bit of a negative because of what happened to Meta. And so you saw everything felt really positive. You had a huge beat from Alphabet and AMD yesterday. And then you also saw Qualcomm's stock shoot up throughout the day today. So it's giving back some of its gains, but I think the market had largely anticipated this was gonna be a good result, which it was. $10.7 billion in revenue going forward from here. Where is the strength in their opportunity to continue to see revenue growth going forward? Well, this represents record revenue. The company also showed uh, record uh, earnings and it showed uh, record EBT, which means its margin it was expanding as well. So it's really firing on all cylinders. Over the past few quarters, I've been pretty bullish about the company's diversification strategy. It became the leader in its RF front end business. It has now a, hit a $1.5 billion per quarter IoT business. Uh, its automotive pipeline is now jettisoned up to something like 13 billion with pretty significant wins announced this quarter with uh, BMW, GM, Renault. So they're, they're not just a handset company anymore, but they've also been able to shed some of the fear that investors have had about its ties to Apple. Its growth is coming more from Android, which saw 60% growth in its handsets against a 42% overall growth. So the fact that the company's been able to diversify so successfully, and plus it still has a really high margin licensing business, there's a lot to be uh, excited about. And one last thing to note is it is now the largest fabless uh, chip maker by revenue, and it trades at something like a 17 times forward PE versus NVIDIA, which is somewhere around 48 as of right now, and AMD at 32. So there's a lot of positives for investors that are tracking this and its growth because it's diversified. Well, Qualcomm, as you mentioned, is getting more diversified. But in terms of where the revenue is actually coming from, $6 billion still did come from handsets. You mentioned some of those automotive deals, but that was just about $256 million in revenue for this latest quarter. When do you think we'll start to see some of these other uh, more burgeoning uh, sources of revenue really start to pick up here for Qualcomm? Yeah, so you see the handset business is, is representing just a little bit more than half of the revenue right now. And over the past several quarters, you've actually seen that gap close significantly. If you go back and look one or even two years ago, that percentage was significantly higher. So under CEO Cristiano Oman, which I actually had a chance to talk to uh, right as these earnings hit, uh, he has been very, very excited and passionate about the growth that is coming from these adjacencies. So if you track it on a quarter by quarter basis and a year over year basis, they were able to create more than, I think it was three different billion dollar revenue streams uh, now with the handsets, IoT business, and the um, RF front end business, and plus the automotive business, which is a longer tail, but with this digital chassis technology and all these partners, it is a $13 billion pipeline. And that is longer tail to your point. But if you're looking for, to answer the earlier question, where does that growth continue to come from? That's where you've got to start to say it's pretty optimistic, especially when it's trading in this range of forward earnings versus some of the other fabulous companies. The current guidance for the upcoming quarter, 10.2 to $11 billion on the revenue front. And so when you think about the growth prospects, I suppose, and what you've heard from the company thus far, uh, is this type of guidance appealing to you at this point, considering what you were just laying out in the run rate that many of those sub-businesses are already achieving uh, and many of them trying to compound on top of? Well, what we're seeing here is continued momentum. It appears that the dealing with the supply chain constraints hasn't been a, a significant problem. Of course, there's still headwinds, but they've taken on a, a working with multiple fabs, expanded to uh, beyond TSM to also working more closely with Samsung. Uh, so you've got that working in their favor. The demand for mobile devices isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So you kind of look at the overall landscape. This, this uh, raise was uh, 10.2 to 11 versus 9.6 is what the street is seeing. So the companies, they're, they're, they're putting it out there that they're expecting to grow. And right now with some of the headwinds, macroeconomic, inflation, interest rates, and the overall sort of negative sentiment towards growth, it shows a lot of confidence to, to raise right now 
when it may have been safer to kind of hold back a little bit and see how things are going to develop.